say these guys did three hits right here. Well, if they did three hits, you'd have to allocate them. So what you would do is you could assign two here and one here. And what that means is you would take the armor save. This guy has the two uh, bolt uh, las guns, so he'd need a two plus with his chaos, oh, chaos armor. I rolled a one, so he would be dead. This guy, this guy right here, he took a last cannon shot. Well, he doesn't get an armor save. However, Terminators have a five plus and vulnerable. I mean, get yeah, vulnerable save, so he'd get a five plus. Hey, he rolled a six, so he saved, and then. He would roll for the one last gun and shot, and he rolled another six, so he's still alive. Wound allocation is is actually I like it in this game because a unit takes a lot of shots. It's a good way to pick off the heavy weapon guy that's hiding in there, possibly even that sergeant with the power fist. So it's a good way. Uh, I like it. It's a good rule for this edition. All right, next thing we're going to talk about is instant death. Your models have a toughness. Most Space Marines, Cal Space Marines, Necrons, Orcs, etc., etc., have toughness four. Toughness typically ranges between four through five. And once you start getting into your demon princes and monstrous creatures like in Tyranids and stuff, and you can get sixes. Uh, you, some of your Eldar stuff has seven. I mean, an eight for their uh, Wraith Lord. But anyways, what instant death is is if any wound, and this typically applies just to to heroes because they have more than one wound. These, even though these guys are badass terminators, they only have one wound. So if you take a hit, double your toughness. And let's say these guys are toughness four. Of course, this last cannon is strength nine. That's twice his toughness. If he fails his invulnerable save, then he is dead. No matter how many wounds he has. So if he was a character, he would just be flat out dead. It would just kill him. So instant death. You have to be careful with your characters. Uh, uh, most of them don't die from instant death shooting. Most of them die from instant death uh, power fists. That, so in close combat, instant death can work also. Power fists and power claws double your strength. So here again, you can kill uh, an opponent that way. And we'll talk about that when we get to close combat. All right, next thing we're going to talk about is instant death. Your models have a toughness. Most Space Marines, Cal Space Marines, Necrons, Orcs, etc., etc., have toughness four. Toughness typically ranges between four through five. And once you start getting into your demon princes and monstrous creatures like in Tyranids and stuff, and you can get sixes. Uh, you, some of your Eldar stuff has seven, I mean, an eight for their uh, Wraith Lord. But, anyways, what instant death is, is if any wound, and this typically applies just to to heroes because they have more than one wound. These, even though these guys are badass terminators, they only have one wound. So if you take a hit, double your toughness. And let's say these guys are toughness four. Of course, this last cannon is strength nine. That's twice his toughness. If he fails his invulnerable save, then he is dead, no matter how many wounds he has. So if he was a character, he would just be flat out dead. It would just kill him. So instant death. You have to be careful with your characters. Uh, uh, most of them don't die from instant death shooting. Most of them die from instant death uh, power fists. That, so in close combat, instant death can work also. Power fists and power claws double your strength. So here again, you can kill uh, an opponent that way. And we'll talk about that when we get to close combat. All right, now we're getting into the salt phase, one of my favorite phases. This... Uh, they, they changed the assault rules a little bit in this edition. It's a little more bloody than it was previously, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because leadership in 40K tends to be high. Armies have, you know, there's so many 8, 9s, and 10s in armies nowadays, it's, uh, they hardly ever fail a leadership test. All right, in the assault phase, that comes after, let's do a quick recap. You know you got the movement phase, then the shooting phase, then the assault phase. So the assault phase is the last phase of your turn. Basically, you get a six inch move. There are some exceptions to that, but most things assault in the game six inches. There are some that have 12, but those are in your specific rules and we, we'll talk about a few of those later. So, you'd basically move, these guys would have and their 
these guys could have moved in the movement phase and if they ended up there since they're terminators they could have shot and then whatever they didn't kill you can move six inches and you can see both of these guys would be in and what you do is you move closest to closest you have to move this guy closest the first one has to be closest to closest and then you sort of pile in that's the attacker and then the guy that's defending he moves his guys in up to six inches away and the reason I say up to six inches away if you had a big huge orc mob you know that was way out here or something or big unit of bugs they would move six inches so that doesn't mean they would all swarm you a lot of them would swarm you but they wouldn't all swarm you alright another quick thing is uh, people or units that cannot assault if a unit is falling back like it was broken or something from shooting it can't it can't assault during the assault phase if it shot a rapid fire weapon it can't assault during the assault phase if it went to ground again it couldn't if it ran it couldn't and of course if you're already locked in combat you know you can't assault you're part of an assault already okay you're probably thinking well what's the advantage of an assault well assaults are like I said they're a lot quicker and deadlier than they have been in the past uh, an advantage these terminators assaulted terminators have two base attacks in close combat and when you assault this goes for every everybody when you assault in the game you get plus one attack so you can see it's huge if an orc mob of 30 guys get a charge off that's an extra 30 attacks coming at you huge 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 so you want to get the assaults off now there are some rules like counter assault and we will talk about those but pretty much that's how that works assault phase you compare the weapon skill of the attacker to the weapon skill of the defender. You look at the chart in the book. You roll that number. If you roll that number or higher, you hit them. And then to wound, same chart to wound is used as in the shooting phase. Uh, you get your wound. Uh, if you wound them, they get an armor save. In close combat, unless they're hit by power weapons and power fists and whatnot, they actually get armor saves. So when I was running my orcs, you know, their armor is six. Well, every gun in the game almost has punches through that armor. But in close combat, I actually get a chance to try to save with a six. Not a very good chance, but hey, some chance is better than none, right? Uh, so orcs, they're, they're fun. All right, in this assault phase right here, these Chaos guys have an initiative of four. Marine, uh, not Marines, but Imperial Guard have an initiative of three. In this game... The guy with the highest initiative goes first. So even though these guys charged, uh, well, that's not a good example. Say the Imperial Guard charged the Chaos guys for some reason. The Imperial Guard would get the plus one attack, but the Terminators would go first because their initiative is higher. And that's, that's really huge because your Elf races, your Eldar, your Dark Eldar, they tend to have a low toughness, not much armor, but they have a high initiative, so they get to go first. And everything is, goes in initiative order. And you can have, if two people have the same initiative, then it's, con it's considered simultaneous attacks. So you could theoretically kill each other, at, you know, you're killing each other at the same time. All right, we're going to talk about who gets to fight. Obviously, the two Terminators get to fight. These three Guardsmen get to fight. But this guy is more than two inches away from a guy in base-to-base -base contact, so therefore he doesn't get to fight or get to do his attacks. And this addition, when these guys kill whatever, you can move, remove the guys from back here, so these guys still get their attack. So that's another way they made close combat deadly in this addition, is you can kill a bunch of guys, you remove them from those that aren't into combat, so these guys would still get their number of attacks. Alright, let's say the Terminators are going to assault the Imperial Guardsmen in the cover here, since they're in cover, and these guys, let's say they don't have grenades, then when you assault a, a unit in cover, your initiative is lowered to one. So actually the Guardsmen would get to go before the Chaos guys. So that's, that's sort of an advantage. Grenades can negate the disadvantage, and Space Marines and Chaos Space Marines, their regular troopers tend to have stock grenades so it would negate that but uh, not everybody in the game has grenades the marines and space marines like I said are well equipped 
Uh, not everybody is that lucky. So grenades play some part in altering who gets to go first, but not always.